province in Victoria, we're seeing that right now. And today we're going to find out if that lockdown is extended until at least early next week. But there are no cases outside Greater Melbourne. Regional leaders are calling for country areas to be exempt from any extension. Join me live now as a member for Mallee Ann Webb. So she's here in the studio with me. You escaped Victoria. I did. Lucky you at the moment. I know. I know. And I mean, it, depending what happens, of course, I may be uh, limited to remaining here rather than getting along with my work mm. in Mallee. Well, we're seeing this really Melbourne-centric outbreak. It hasn't extended to the regions, but it is still being felt in the regions. Tell us what's happening in areas like Mallee when you see these lockdowns in the cities. Well, once again, we've been uh, put in the same class as those who live in Port Melbourne or Whittlesea. Um, Mildura, for example, is 550 kilometres from Melbourne. We have over 50,000 people living in that area. All businesses are closed. It's all the same lockdowns and restrictions. This is the fourth time now and regional Victorians are sick and tired of it. Being considered the same and often ignored by the Victorian state government until it comes to an issue of a lockdown. Well, this is the fourth lockdown that Victoria's yeah. seen now mm. and regional areas, you know, struggling with you know, farming areas that have seen struggles outside COVID mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. they don't get the virus, but you still get locked down. I mean, it seems crazy. It is crazy. Regional Victoria has behaved so well and uh, clearly the outcomes are there. We don't have COVID. Uh, we have, in my patch, we have borders to New South Wales and South Australia. So border communities are once again in that tied up state where South Australia has closed to them. I'm just really grateful that New South Wales have shown the way. They have really shown leadership in how to manage these outbreaks. And, you know, Western Australia also, they've done a targeted, limited approach to a lockdown. And I just hope that the Victorian state government will come out today and lift the bans on regional Victoria. So what would you like to see? We, there's talk of this ring of steel and the yeah. tears in that. Would that be a backwards move, let's say? Well, I think that it would be preferable to having all of Victoria as a state lockdown. Uh, what we want to see is that Melbourne and Melbourneites are constrained to live within their geographical location as opposed to coming out into the regions. Uh, you know, this is an issue for policing and, and a matter for the state, and the state alone can manage it. I did note that the uh, Police Association yesterday said we don't want to do a ring of steel, you know, it's a lot of work. And, well, it might be a lot of work, but locking down all of regional Victoria for no good reason, I think, ha has the trump card. And we've, so we see that this is, we're going to live with this virus for years to come. Probably. Absolutely. Uh, I've noticed that Singapore's... Prime Minister has really levelled with his his own people mm. about what we need to do. What do we need to do here? I mean, we've really gone for this elimination strategy, not in name, but in practice. Do you think there needs to be federal quarantine facilities? Do we need to do something about the vaccine rollout? Look, I think I'll take the, the second point first, which is the vaccine rollout. Um, you know, we have today one of our fabulous disability services um, who have uh, an enormous number of staff, I think somewhere around 150 staff, they cannot get the Pfizer vaccine in Mildura because the state government has not made Mildura a state vaccination hub. That means that every, every uh, staff member has to travel nine hours round trip to get the jab to continue working in the disability sector. It is absolutely outrageous that Mildura, which is such an isolated um, regional city, is being restrained and overlooked and treated in this manner. It's really disdainful and the state government needs to do more about it. What about hotel quarantine? Well, the hotel quarantine, uh, even if we get a federal um, quarantine set up like Howard Springs, expand Howard Springs, obviously we're working on that. Uh, the, the hotel quarantine is still going to be needed. That's the fact, mm. because we have so many people needing to come in from overseas. It's the source of all the problems at the moment. Well, the, certainly the management of the quarantine system is, and uh, I think in Victoria what we're looking at, uh, it got away from them one more time and the contact tracing is really complicated and takes a long time. They didn't have the QR code set 
as New South Wales and other states have done. So, uh, you know, there, there is work that the state government needs to do to ensure that Victorians are not treated in this way on an ongoing basis. Okay, we will see. We still don't have a time for that media conference today, but uh, we're all holding our breath oh, yes. a little bit. And yes. Webster, thanks so much for making the time today. Thank you, Laura.